Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Eva. Hi. Oh, Eva's joining us for breakfast already. She just woke up. Okay. August 27, 2020 is a Thursday. And today is the feast of an important mother in uh, the roster of Catholic saints. We have a very important feast today. Feast day of Saint Monica. Saint Monica. Who is Saint Monica? Mia? What? The mother of St. Augustine. Very good. The mother of St. Augustine. And who is St. Augustine? The Bishop of Hippo. The Bishop of Hippo. Okay. From Bishop of Hippo. Spain. And, huh? Where did he come from, Hippo? No, he was made Bishop of Hippo. Yeah. Uh, a very, very uh, big um, figure in the church who... Uh, Oh, well, we'll learn more about it tomorrow. Okay, anyway, but today is the feast day of his mother. So you see, in the church, there are plenty of these situations, right? Saints who come from one and the same family. And here we have a good example of a parent and uh, her child, her son, who, by the way, was a uh, quite a uh, quite a character in his youth right smart very smart guy uh, and uh, and um, uh, very adventurous um, but who made use of his uh, smartness uh, and his genius in the beginning for all the wrong reasons <laughs> okay uh, and so he had a mother in St. Monica, who did one thing. Well, make it two. But uh, one thing, perhaps more than the other. And what is that? She prayed. She was a very, very prayerful woman that really practically spent much of her life praying praying and praying for the conversion of her son, Augustine, and her husband, too, by the way. Her husband, who was also not a Catholic and only got converted towards uh, the end of his life. Okay? But look at the fruits of St. Monica's prayers. <clears throat> she did not only convert her husband and her son, but but became her prayers became the uh, the seed that made augustine not only a convert but a priest a bishop a doctor of the church and eventually a great saint in the catholic church so this should tell us about the power of prayer the power of especially the power of a parent's prayer for her, ch her child. So, something all of us could uh, take a lesson from. Never to cease praying for our children. Never to give up praying for our children. In fact, sometimes it's perhaps the best thing we can do for our children. To pray for them all the time, every day. And speaking of prayer, that's going to be relevant in today's commentary as well. So the gospel comes from St. Matthew, chapter 24, verses 42 to 51. Okay, here goes. Jesus said to his disciples, stay awake. Are we awake already? Uh, Eva, are you awake? Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake, right? <laughs> Obviously, right? 
if you were anticipating, you knew that there was a thief who was going to come to your house, are you going to sleep? Right? You wouldn't have, right? You would have waited until that thief comes so that you can deter him, stop him from doing what uh, he was going to do, which is to break into the house. So would, uh, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be awake. You must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man, Jesus, will come. The Gospel continues from there, but we can stop here and comment on that portion. Jesus says, stay awake. You never know when the thief is coming. Of course, that is a metaphor to um, teach us the lesson of vigilance. Okay? Vigilance. That in this, in this life, in this journey, we are trekking towards our final home, which is heaven. This is not a walk in the park. Right? This is not a walk in the park. We are, we are walking through rough terrain. We are trekking through dangerous paths. There are plenty of obstacles along the way. There are plenty of thorns on the path. There are plenty of bushes and brushes that we, that we um, you know, need to hack through. Okay? Our path to heaven is not a paved highway. It's not a paved freeway without obstacles. No. Uh, it's like one of those experiences we have already had of, you know, climbing a mountain, climbing a hill, right? When we go hiking, we pass through narrow paths and there are plenty of stones and rocks and things you have to climb over and things you have to brush away and things you sometimes have to hack through, right? To get to the summit. Well, that's the same thing we're experiencing in life. Life has plenty of its obstacles like those along the path that we are trekking towards sanctity and our Lord tells us here you got to be vigilant right you got to watch where you're walking right when we when we hike we do the same thing while we focus on the summit where we're going you also have to focus on where you're walking to avoid getting hurt and to make sure that you are still along the path so you have to be vigilant so that's another metaphor we can give uh, to, to talk about vigilance and, and the need to be always alert. Not necessarily, you know, just awake like the opposite of sleeping, right? Mia has a difficult time sleeping when there's light. We were just talking about it this morning. Okay? It's not just a question of being awake, but being alert, being on the ready all the time. That is what vigilance is all about, being ready. Why? Why do we always have to be on the ready? Why do we have to be vigilant? By the way, the word vigilant comes from? Vigilante. Vigilante? <laughs> yeah, what is a vigilante? Comes from the root word? Vigil, Jana. Very good. And vigil means? Yeah, to keep watch, right? Like an overnight kind of watch. That is why you have the vigil uh, towards the, the, the Holy Eucharist, right? What do we do? We stay and watch. We keep Jesus company, right? And that goes all through the night. So it's to be watchful. To be vigilant is to be watchful, to be always on the ready, to be alert. To be alert against what? To be alert about what? To be ready for what? Well, it's only one simple answer, right? To be watchful for the devil. 
Yeah, because, well, we can apply it to that. Of course, the devil is always around trying to look for the slightest opportunity that he could attack us, that he could tempt us to sin. Okay? We got to be watchful for that. We got to stay awake for that. Why? Because if not, if not, if we live our lives in sin, well, there will come a time that the master of the house will come, like what the gospel is telling us here. Okay? And we will be caught unawares because we did not take care of our affairs. Then when the Son of Man comes and we have to do a reckoning, well, we're not ready because we squandered our, our uh, uh, um, office as being in charge of the house that we were given to take care of. Right? If you were your own house, you were the father of the house, you'll do the same thing. Right? So you got to watch for the devil. You got to be watchful. You got to be you got to take care that the devil doesn't have a chance to pounce on you. So that's what our Lord means when he says we have to watch. Be watchful. But the question here is how are we going to be vigilant? How are we going to be watchful? How shall we do that? Hmm? How shall we do that? You know, our Lord gives us a clue. Our Lord gives us a clue when? During the agony in the garden. You remember what happened in the agony in the garden? When he was there praying and where were the disciples? Where were the apostles? Huh? What's that, Joe? They were at a distance from him. But what were they doing? Sleeping. 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 Our Lord goes back and finds them sleeping. So what does he tell them? Hey, Peter. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. That's what vigilance is all about. Our Lord gives us the answer. And the clue to how we should be vigilant. Watch and pray so that we don't enter into temptation. That's the formula for vigilance. To watch and pray. So let's ask ourselves, what is there, what is there to watch out for? Right? What are those occasions in our lives that are most likely targets of the devil? What are those times... And occasions in our lives when we can be vulnerable to the devil's attack. So much so that we should be watching those situations. We should be watchful about those occasions when we can be vulnerable and open to the devil's attack. Well, let's give a few examples. Right? You got to be watchful about your tendency to laziness and idleness, right? When you just feel like sitting around and not wanting to do anything productive and just make your mind wander and make yourself, I don't know, make your imagination fly and go through all sorts of places, right? There. There. That is one occasion you have to be watchful about. Because if you don't catch yourself being lazy, if you don't catch yourself being idle, then, well, what have we just learned a few weeks ago that we reminded ourselves of? An idle mind is the devil's workshop, right? An idle mind is the devil's workshop. A lazy bone is same thing. The favorite workshop of the devil is somebody who's lazy, somebody who is sluggish, somebody who does not jump out of bed. <clears throat> right? I've been telling you about that. The first battle of your day is to jump out of bed. 
Because if you don't physically jump out of bed, you're already given in to the devil who wants you to start your day in a sluggish and lazy way. Okay? So that's the first thing to watch out for. Tendency of being lazy. Tendency of being idle. What else? Catch yourself when you're wasting time. See, the devil loves it when we waste time. Which is, you know, they come together with laziness too. You know, they're, they're, quite, they're, they're faces of the same coin. Because when you're lazy, you have a tendency to waste time. And in fact, wasting time on useless activity is a form of laziness. Because that only means you don't want to do what you ought to do when you ought to do them. Right? <laughs> You tend to focus on other things that are not important. You tend to focus on activities that have no bearing on your objectives. They have no bearing on how your life is going to turn out that day. They have no bearing in your productivity for that day. So wasteful uh, endeavors that do not contribute to the overall objective of your day is a waste of time. And we were guilty of that. A lot of times we're guilty of wasting time all throughout the day. Okay? All throughout the day. So look at your, look at your practices. Look at the things that you do. And, uh, and ask yourself, well, are these things uh, really part of my schedule to begin with? Okay? Are these things I'm doing now going to contribute at all to my uh, objectives. Okay? What else? Oh, here is one very big <clears throat> occasion when many of us have the tendency to uh, slacken in. Number three. What else do we watch for? Number three. Look at this. Well, when you go to websites that you're not supposed to access, boom. Right, <laughs> I think I think many of us are guilty of that. Right, when we go to websites on the internet, we are not supposed to access, and this is a big temptation to a lot of people. See? big big temptation to a lot of people, and we're not only talking here of <clears throat> sorry of illicit websites or things that would drive us to real sin, like pornographic websites. Okay, uh, this includes many other kinds of websites that we don't have to access because we simply don't have to, right? Because going to those things would mean a waste of time or going to those other reading materials, if it were just a matter of reading materials on the web, will contribute to distorting our worldview, okay? If not really distorting our faith outright, Okay? There are many things like those that are unnecessary for us to go. In the first place, they're a waste of our time because you have your, each of you have your, your uh, Chromebooks to use for study primarily, right? Not for entertainment and not for other things. And we have a very clear rule in the house. If you need to access other websites, you ask permission, okay? You ask permission before you go to them. So, well, but let's watch, okay? Let us watch because it can be a big temptation and I know it happens. Okay, what else? Number four. Oh, we already uh, said something to this effect. If you don't follow your schedule, okay? Part of wasting time, etc. So, okay. Oh, number five. When you don't do your chores, you got to watch out for that too. Right? You got to watch out for that. When you don't do your chores, when you don't do it on time, when you do it sloppily, when you drag your feet, when you complain about doing your chores. Okay? These, are the <laughs> These are, you know, our everyday, everyday experiences, right? In our lives. That we have to be watchful about. 
We have to be watchful. These are the things that we need to be watchful for. We need to be vigilant, always on our toes, never, never to let our guard down. You see how we do it in Taekwondo, right? When we spar in Taekwondo, what happens? What do we do, right? We keep our guard up, right? Same thing is true with boxing or any other sport. Once you put that guard down, boom, goes the devil's punch. Boom, 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 right? And what happens? Boom, you're knocked out. Right? So apply what you have learned in Taekwondo. Apply it here. Apply it in your personal lives. Apply it in this virtue of vigilance. Never let your guard down. Because the devil is just waiting in the wings. Waiting around there. Ready to pounce on you when you put your guard down. Now, what's going to help you be vigilant? What's the second part of our Lord's recommendation? Watch and pray. Pray. Prayer is our tool to help us keep that guard up. Okay? Keep the guard up with prayer. Prayer, prayer. Because if prayer becomes the theme of your life, if prayer becomes the theme of your day, then you're always going to be conscious of the presence of God. Okay? Prayer helps us to be conscious of the presence of God in our day. And when we are conscious of the presence of God all throughout the day, then that helps to keep us on our toes because we are aware that God is watching that God is the divine spectator who is watching your theatrical performance, so to speak, in the stage of life. Okay? See? So it's like your band playing. When you're playing band and you have your audience right there down the stage when you're uh, all watching you, right? Well, you give it your best shot, right? You give it your best performance. You're not going to be playing band, you know, your music there in a lazy way or, you know, out of beat or just any which way you want to do it, right? No, you got to keep in sync. You got to keep the rhythm. You always got to do it right. And that's how you're going to satisfy your audience. Well, let's satisfy our divine audience, God, by always being in sync, by always being in the rhythm of prayer let us make prayer the music of our day let us make prayer the refrain of our day because that is what's going to help us keep presence of god all throughout our day and keep us on our toes watching and being vigilant and that's why it's a good habit to scatter moments of prayer all throughout the day right if I may just rattle off a few of our practices here in the Kleachko household. Well, when, they, when the kids hear the knock on the door at 6 o'clock in the morning, well, they jump out of bed on their knees doing their morning prayer. And then we gather around for breakfast. 30 minutes later, we pray before meals. We pray after meals. After that, we go to Mass. Okay? <clears throat> after Mass... Before we begin our, our work day and school day, we pray the prayer of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So we ask the Holy Spirit's uh, intercession in, in, in carrying out the work of the day. And then towards before noontime at around 11 o'clock, 11, sorry, 11.30, we pray one part of the rosary. Okay? One part of the rosary. Uh, we break our work day with one part of the rosary, which we normally pray outside walking in the backyard. And then at 12 noon, the angelus. Okay? And then mealtime again at lunch, prayer before meals, prayer after lunch, after meals. Okay? And then we go through the afternoon, and at 3 o'clock, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, which we pray all together again, Divine Mercy Chaplet. And then the afternoon proceeds until well, 6 o'clock, angelus again. For many families, they pray the angelus again at 6 o'clock. Right? And then... Uh, at night, well, 
we have the uh, the rosary, the main rosary after after uh, supper, okay. And then before we go to bed, examination of conscience. For we examine our day and in front of the presence of God, ask ourselves questions that will help us understand ourselves and how we went through the day and whether we could uh, uh, sleep quietly at night knowing that we have offered our day to God uh, uh, beautifully. And if not, then we ask pardon for our uh, faults and sins. And then just before we hit the sack, the three Hail Marys to help us live the virtue of purity okay, uh, that night. And then, by the way, all throughout the day, we litter it with plenty of aspirations to our guardian angels, to St. Michael and the saints and many other things. So the refrain of the day that connects every activity of the day is prayer. And that is how, that is how we are going to keep ourselves awake and vigilant all throughout the day watch and pray so that you don't enter into temptation okay that is it for us have a good day everybody wake up Chevelle. you're still sleepy <laughs> and for those of you on the other side of the globe good night and have a restful sleep. Those of you in our side of the globe, enjoy your day. Have a good day. Hopefully we'll see each other again tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Uh-oh. -uh. Only Joseph is saying goodbye. Hey. <laughs> bye. <No. laughs> okay. Bye-bye.